Hi there, and welcome to Amazi. I'm Cindy, founder and CEO of Amazi. Amazi is looking to revolutionize due diligence processes across industries by creating a decentralized service to enhance existing siloed solutions. I will now talk you through the problem Amazi is addressing, the unique solution we're offering, followed by a market focus and the execution. I wanted to spend just a second on what due diligence is, and in most cases, it's a regulatory requirement that is conducted with business transactions to understand who you're doing business with. The idea of Amazi was born while I was working as a regulatory consultant implementing financial regulations at various organizations. With every project that I worked on, it involved communicating to clients and corporations. And what I found was that the same corporations were being asked to produce the same documentation and the same credentials over and over again. These clients were inundated with requests. Operationally, this was a huge burden on, on corporations. Umazi solves the problem by allowing corporates to create a digital identity that represents their corporate due diligence credentials. These credentials are validated and verified by a regulated institution, for example, a bank or a law firm. The corporate can then provision visibility of the validated credentials established by one entity to another. With this identity, the corporate can repeat the business process that requires due diligence credentials seamlessly without duplication. This means that Barclays, for example, can rely on credentials established by Morgan Stanley to complete their own due diligence. Omazi facilitates detailed, verified client data sharing and visibility. With Omazi, the fragmented cross-entity client onboarding and product enablement process becomes streamlined. It allows institutions to manage client relationships real-time instead of reactively. Umazi can remove the bottleneck with multi-party transactions, for example, mergers and acquisitions and structured loans, to avoid the delays faced by front office staff when facilitating these transactions. ESG regulations, the European Commission's Sustainable Finance Action Plan introduces a range of new legislative measures requiring funds to disclose their ESG risks. What better way to do this than through the Amazi platform, where all the information can be stored once and shared with many. This creates a chain of reliability in other business transactions, for example, supply chain. Amazi is built on Corda, R3's open source blockchain network. Corda was specifically designed with the finance industry in mind. Corda is already trusted by over 300 financial institutions and our foundational technology facilitates the trust element of the information validated and verified and is revolutionary. Like we trust the documentation certification process by a lawyer, the information on Amazi will be trusted. We've secured our first client with first mover preference very early on in our journey. We've not wasted time during lockdown. Amazi is currently supported by three accelerated with extensive market research done by two, both of these accelerators confirmed the uniqueness of the Amazi product offering. We're in negotiations with two other additional pilot clients, and I'm happy to announce the launch of our interactive institutional platform to facilitate these pilots. I thank you for your time today. What are the challenges that a financial institution will face when implementing your solution and, and how are you going about addressing this? So I think before I answer this question, I think it's also just worth noting that it will depend from one institution to another. The main differentiators are risk appetite for disruptive tech versus those who sit on the sideline waiting to see kind of how things play out. Um, then there's the knowledge and understanding. 
an FI hiring a crypto specialist or a blockchain specialist was completely unheard of three years ago when I made the change in my career. Um, and then you've got others who are more aggressive. So for example, ING focuses on very specific use cases for blockchain technology. And then the last one I would say is translating business speak into tech speak and back again is a skill um, in its own and one that I've learned to hone it on over the years and is very, very useful, especially when faced with FIs, because you're going to be facing a lot of stakeholders and FIs are notoriously struggling with cross-functional project communication.